the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who are born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son, who is close to the father's heart, who has made him known. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In 2002, my wife and I attended a spirituality summit sponsored by Trinity Church, Wall Street, New York. And at that, the keynote speaker was Desmond Tutu. And we had the opportunity then to have a moment alone with him in the midst of a crowd and to receive his blessing. And we were deeply honored and touched by that. But we also had the opportunity with that tiny little man standing before us to have the backs of our heads seized, his long thumbs trace the sign of the cross on our foreheads, and in Hosa to bless us and to bless our lives. We were truly moved by that and felt like we connected to a man who was so deeply connected to Christ, but also so deeply connected to the struggle of the human race to find justice and peace. And I think both of us in that moment were truly aware of that deep connection. Tutu often preached that he only had one sermon. Uh, and of the times that I have heard him preach over and over again, always amazed at the passion and originality with which he spoke of the love of Christ, his one sermon was, God loves you. And I think at that core of his being, he felt that. And in the heart and witness of his work, he showed it. He stood as a bastion of justice in the midst of the upheaval of apartheid. He stood in the breach as apartheid crumbled and as South Africa, which in so many other countries where social revolution had taken place to such a degree, there was violence and retribution. He presided over a truth and reconciliation commission in which the people of the country of whatever color, whatever creed, whatever calling were able to meet each other face to face and to find reconciliation and some level of peace to the suffering that they had experienced on either side of the baton and the gun. We forget sometimes how much it means to be witnesses to the light and love of Christ. We forget sometimes that we are called every single day to be the kind of witness to the word that John speaks of in his prologue. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Tutu lived in testimony to that light. We too here at St. Peter's strive to live in testimony to that light. Sometimes we succeed, sometimes we stumble, but always we strive to be faithful. And when we stumble, we repent and return to God. And when we are effective in our witness, we shine with the light and love of Christ. We are able to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves, and in the same witness that Tutu modeled, 
we strive for justice and peace, and we seek to respect the dignity of every human being. A long time ago, as my grandmother was passing from this world into the next, she asked me to preach at her funeral and told me that if I delivered a eulogy, she would come back and haunt me. So do not assume in this instance that I am offering a eulogy, a simple good word at the end of a life for Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Instead, I am lifting up a banner from a man that has fallen in this life and risen to the next, a simple sermon that is the truth of the love of God that God loves you, God loves us, and God calls upon us to be models and witnesses and practitioners of that love so that the truth of God may be made manifest, so that the reconciliation of God may be practiced, so that the hope of the love of Christ be made incarnate, not only in that moment years ago when Mary laid her firstborn son in the manger wrapped in swaddling clothes, but also as the God bear that each one of us is made into as we carry Christ in our hearts into the world and quicken that love with the service of our hands. In Jesus' name, we pray and serve and give thanks for a life well lived in Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who joins the saints in light and again reminds us that God loves us. Amen. Amen.